Hi everyone. Um, so I'm about to speak from the heart and say some things that are probably going to make folks uncomfortable, but I ask that you bear with me and try to sit with the discomfort rather than reject it out of hand. Today, I want to celebrate the incredible steadfastness of the Palestinian resistance and the axis of resistance in their fight for the liberation of Palestine. The poster for this event said marking one year of genocide plus 75 years, and this is important honor all the martyrs, not just in Palestine, but in Lebanon, in Yemen, in Syria, in Iraq, in Iran, and throughout the region. But today should be more than just a commemoration of genocide. The Palestinian people are far more than victims, and we must go beyond merely sharing their tragedies and ensure we revel in their victories as well. The Palestinian martyr of pen and bullet, Basel al Araj, wrote, never spread the occupation's propaganda and do not contribute to instilling a sense of defeat. Today, we should recognize and honor the heroic and immense act of resistance against the Zionist occupation that was Operation Al-Aqsa Flood on October 7, one year ago. Al-Aqsa Flood was carried out by multiple factions within the Palestinian resistance and will go down in history alongside other great rebellions like Nat Turner's rebellion against slavery or the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising against the Nazis. Walter Rodney once wrote, by what standard of morality can the violence used by a slave to break his chains be considered the same as the violence of a slave master? Franz Fanon once wrote that decolonization is always a violent event. And Kwame Touré wrote that peace is a white man's word. Ours is liberation. Yeah. Woo! Indigenous peoples taking up arms to fight their colonizers is a profoundly honorable act of resistance and liberation. I will never condemn Hamas or Hezbollah or Ansar Allah or the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and express wholehearted support for these freedom fighters as I would any indigenous people fighting colonialism by any means. Woo! I honor the martyrs and principled leaders Ismail Haniya and Syed Hassan Nasrallah who were so recently martyred by the Zionist entity. The Zionist occupation of orchards martyred many of Haniya's family members as well, including his children. But after his kids were martyred, Hania stated that he considered all the children of Palestine to be his children. To condemn the axis of resistance would be no different than condemning freedom fighters and their accomplices in Algeria or Haiti who fought and ejected the French settlers who were occupying their lands and committing genocide against them. The Palestinian martyr Nizar Banat stated that the French occupation in Algeria most closely resembled the occupation in Palestine. So-called Israel has no right to exist and has never in 76 years stopped committing genocide. Neither does the settler colonial state of Canada have a right to exist, nor the United States, and when the U.S. empire falls, the biggest obstacle to total liberation will be removed. It's absurd and insulting to suggest that Palestinians should live in peace as neighbors alongside Zionist settlers who live in stolen Palestinian houses, who are reserves for the Zionist occupation force, who debated whether raping Palestinians was acceptable, who physically blocked aid from entering Gaza on multiple occasions, who support the genocide in vast majority, and without whom the settler colonial violence in occupied Palestine could not exist. There is no Israel-Palestine. There is only Palestine and occupied Palestine. Woo! I'm so tired of listening to Western pundits, institutions, and nonprofits being platformed and speaking their weasel words about Palestine, claiming that they support Palestinian liberation when they do not speak of or support Palestinian resistance fighters enacting that liberation. So many claim to be anti-Zionist, but well, what they really support is the liberal Zionist fantasy where both sides live in peace, the Zionist entity is reformed into something Westerners find more palatable, and settlers are permitted to remain in the houses and on the land they stole, as long as they make them some concessions. Just because someone says the word ceasefire or apartheid doesn't mean they truly support Palestine. And in fact, both of these terms have been used to normalize the existence of the Zionist entity, reduce its crimes to mere policy issues which can be reformed, and obscure what Palestinian liberation truly means. The implementation of the Thawabet and the return of all their land. We don't need Western-dominated institutions like the UN, the ICJ, or human Somebody. rights organizations to confirm Somebody. the atrocities committed by the Zionist entity, and we don't need Westerners with titles, degrees, and positions to explain the situation in Palestine to us. We can hear news and learn history straight from the resistance through the Resistance News Network on Telegram,
from the writings and speeches of the martyrs, and from publications and individuals who support the axis of resistance without apology. As Tarek Bazi put it, quote, Free Palestine is meaningless if you can't make clear who will free Palestine, how they will free Palestine, and from whom they will free Palestine. The armed Islamic resistance is freeing Palestine. They're not freeing Palestine with international law and universal human rights. They're freeing Palestine with the Quran and rockets. They're not freeing Palestine from Netanyahu. They're freeing Palestine from US imperialism and Zionist settler colonialism. I encourage you all to reject the liberal Western both sides view, which normalizes so-called Israel, to approach all Western institutions with skepticism and begin unlearning imperialist propaganda, not just about Palestine, about China, Iran, North Korea, and the Global South more broadly. Propaganda which we grew up here in the Imperial Corps have been taught our entire lives. These states are not harmless, but they are materially supporting numerous anti-imperialist, anti-colonial movements all over the world, including in Palestine. As the Supreme Leader of Iran, Imam Khamenei, recently tweeted, any blow to the Zionist regime by any individual or group is a service to all humanity. To be principled accomplices to the liberation movement of a people, we must understand how they view their own liberation, what their general aims are, what tactics they support, and what they consider traitorous. If you've been advocating for Palestine and you aren't familiar with the Thawabet, you should read it and learn about it. The Thawabet are the constant or red lines of Palestinian liberation, which enshrine principles like armed resistance and the right of return. You can also study the writings and speeches of martyrs like Nizar Banat, Basel al Raj, and George Abbas. And again, you can read dispatches directly from the Axis of Resistance on the Resistance News Network Telegram channel. I've also created an anti-imperialist archive, which has resources on the Thawabet and much more. And I've got some papers with me if you want to uh, take one. I think we need to take stock of the fact that the tactics we've used to advocate for Palestine over the last 12 months have achieved only limited reforms. The groundwork we've done over the past year is important, and we can build on this movement and these relationships we form. But we can't continue restricting ourselves only to the same safe tactics of raising awareness, begging and other managers to do the bare minimum, and posting on social media. We can and must do more to escalate our fight, not just for Gaza, but for indigenous peoples here in our own community who are also being subjected to genocide and assimilation. How can we escalate our fight for Palestine, and also for unhoused folks, for prisoners, and for those struggling with addiction? These are some questions I ask myself these days. May Palestine be free within our lifetimes, and may all empires fall. Thank you. Woo!